We're continuing our series on Tech Thursdays with Southern Miss. We have traveled to Hattiesburg for this edition, and we're talking at the School of Polymer Science and Engineering with Alex Flint, who is an associate professor here. Alex, nice to meet you, sir. Very nice to meet you, too. Tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from and you know, what brought you down here. Yeah, so I, um, I've been here for about 10 years. Um, before that, I was a graduate student at Vanderbilt University, and then I lived in New York City for about six years at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Mm -hmm. uh, after that uh, time, I came and became a professor down here. Now, what is your research and technology down here? So our lab uh, researches RNA. Um, what we do with that is we try to develop novel ways to control uh, cells and organisms uh, for purposes of technology development. You know, this, thing's, this can I impact things such as crops or even traits and things like oysters. Really? Yes. You wouldn't think crops and oysters would fall in the same thing, but I guess the oyster is a type of crop. It is, it is. They all have RNA, so it's, uh, it's definitely possible. There you go. What does this mean to the community itself? So, you know, what we will hope to do with our research is develop technology that can be commercialized. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with that, you know, our goal is to, you know, start, uh, do startup companies, um, hopefully hire local people, in addition to the mission that Southern Miss has to educate and train that next generation workforce in STEM. Why did you decide to explore this? Well, honestly, it was a brand new t topic way back in 2001 when I first started. Uh, and I've stuck with this area since, and it's been a very successful area when it comes to new products. There's multiple pharmaceuticals, multiple ag agro products, and I'm really happy to bring that, these uh, approaches and uh, areas of expertise to the region. Now, if somebody w w wants to find out more about this, I mean, what would intrigue them into being a part of this kind of study? Uh, I think anybody who has interest in molecular biology or genetics, uh, if you wanted to work in a biotech space, uh, these are very common sorts of approaches for therapeutics and um, other, you know, uh, agro products. You know, we've done a, several series here over the past several weeks uh, with uh, the marine research and everything down there, talking about the oysters. We saw, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We saw millions of baby oysters that's in right, a big that's tank, right. and that, that it's like <laughs> you need a microscope to be able to see them. How, how the young lady counted them is still beyond me. <laughs> but, uh, but this is some things that uh, you know, somebody that might be interested in getting involved with in expanding their horizons. Right. So, you know, there's ways that you can breed a better oyster, but there's also ways that you can maybe engineer a better oyster. Mm -hmm. um, and our approaches are non-permanent. Um, so we hope to sort of induce temporary changes that maybe lead to better survivability or better disease resistance without actually changing the animal fundamentally. Uh, and I actually work with the people down on uh, the coast. We go down there, uh, we bring animals back here, we do testing to see if we can develop approaches to actually manipulating their genetics. Now that's kind of strange. I mean, just manipulating the genetics. I mean, you think of something out of a, <laughs> a movie or something like that. Uh, well, I mean, that it, it, it is contemporary research, that's true. Um, th these are, again, like I said, approaches that don't fundamentally change the organism. So they, they give a, a temporary alteration that then is lost. Um, but you know, you do it in a window with like the larva that you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, and those might better seed, they might better grow, uh, resist the you know, uh, freshwater influx that's so damaging. Oh, yes. Um, and, and so the it's been nice. The spillway messed things up for us exactly. for a Exactly, and so what's been nice about working at Southern Miss is I can take these technologies, I, I worked at the Cancer Center, mm -hmm. uh, and then apply them to these local problems. Alex Flint, Associate Professor here at USM. Appreciate your information. Very nice to meet you, too. Glad to be, talk to you. Well, now we're talking to Olivia McNair, who is a, an assistant professor here at uh, Southern. How are you? Good I'm to meet you. I'm doing well. How are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself, if you would. Okay. Well, I'm Olivia McNair. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Polymer Science and Engineering, and um, I started my academic tenure here at, uh, uh, at USM School of Polymer Science and Engineering in August of um, last year. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, finished my first semester of teaching um, and just established a research lab with my first graduate student and two undergraduate students, so I'm super excited about that. Wow, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, tell us about your research and your technology. So the research that I'm involved in is with um, high-performance polymer materials, specifically uh, materials for composites. Mm -hmm. So we think about composites. Composites um, compromise a lot of things, but I do a lot with carbon fiber-based composites. Mm -hmm. So this is a single, um, what we call a ply, 
of a carbon fiber composite. It's got carbon fibers running in a, a single direction and it's kind of tied together or glued together with um, a polymer matrix. Oh. So I do a uh, majority of the research in the polymer matrix and processes to actually get the polymer matrix to adhere well um, to the carbon fiber base. Okay. What does things like this mean to the community? So things like this uh, I mean, very have, much so impact the community because composites, polymer composites are ways to lightweight um, components and structures and they're used mm -hmm. a lot um, in automobiles, any kind of transportation vehicle where you're trying to reduce weight or minimize weight, which reduces fuel, reduces um, pollution and things like that um, through the reduction of weight. So the, these materials can be converted, compacted, and engineered into structures that we can then transform into things that we use every day. So it's not like the old steel vehicles that we have when you used to have a 65 uh, Ford exactly. pickup truck that was all metal. Not exactly. <laughs> and so the, the polymer is also a, a very tough material. Mm -hmm. So they're good for um, like impact resistance and things like that. And so, you know, in the future, things that we're moving toward is to actually ask these materials to do more. So what can we do besides high strength, lightweight? Can we add more functionality? And so we're trying to add different things mm -hmm. that brings more so, functionality. And what, is, what, what was that? So these are man-made ceramic materials that mm -hmm. actually can be dissolved into that polymer matrix and bring different properties. Why did you decide to explore something like this? It's exciting. And it's diverse, and there's so many different things and avenues that you can um, explore with these materials. There's many combinations of additives, fibers, matrices, um, and so the story is endless. And I would think, too, that um, you have I mean, all these things, especially these lightweight polymers here. I mean, just feeling that. That just feels so light, but it is so strong. It is. It's so strong, and that's going to save a lot of energy. It you is. Know, the more that you use, I mean, the lightweight and everything mm -hmm. is going to uh, save a lot with energy. Yep. And we can even focus on reducing the energy to manufacture components as well. So there's a multifaceted um, approach to development of these materials. There's part process, there's part materials, and then in part bringing them all together to make something uh, transformative that's going to affect our communities in a positive manner. That's awesome. Olivia, yeah. thank you so much. No if, problem. If you'd like to find out more about this with the School of Polymer Science and Engineering, the uh, phone number's on your screen. You can go to the website for uh, Southern and find out more about it. But there's so many great things. And over the next several weeks, again, we'll be talking to some other wonderful folks that are involved with um, the uh, wonderful programs that are going up here at Southern Miss.